Hospitals are suffering from shortages in the wake of the deadly earthquakes in Turkey and in Syria. The death toll from the natural disaster has risen to around 44,000 as people, uh, 44,000 people as rescue efforts continue. Hospitals in northern Syria are struggling with medical supply shortages while trying to treat the thousands injured in the quakes. The disaster also impacted the number of staff members available to help. The Syrian government and the U.N. say around 6,000 people have died. Turkish authorities estimate the death toll in their country to be more than 38,000. Just incredible numbers. Joining us now from Gaziantep, Turkey, is Corinne Fleischer. She's the regional director for the Middle East, Northern Africa and Eastern Europe for the World Food Program. I can only imagine um, how busy your organization has been these past few weeks, uh, Corinne. The damage wrought by these quakes, though, we understand will cost in the tens of billion dollars to repair. That's before we even, or not even mentioning the life lost. But how, what, what's the difference in, in trying to get the folks in Syria back to normal compared to Turkey, considering the differences in, um, it's just the infrastructure in both countries? Well, look, if you are a person who has been affected by this earthquake, it's the same for everybody. They have lost everything. I'm here in southern Turkey. I'm talking to people. They they ran out from their homes. They left everything behind, their car keys, their, their credit cards, their anything. They just had their clothes on their, uh, on their body. And uh, now they're struggling. They're trying to go back, get out a few things. Elderly stayed there. They don't want to move. They want to stay there. They, they were born there. They married there. They did the studies there. They built their house. Now they lost everything. So I met uh, with, with people here in, in the camps. They are still traumatized and they're just thinking what their immediate next steps are going to be. So the World Food Program is providing aid to both Turkey and Syria in the wake of this disaster. Can you give us um, specifics? How is your organization trying to help? Well, on day one, we are, we are experienced in that. We put our emergency machinery into play. We sent planes, we sent people, we took money, we reactivated agreements we had with partners here. Uh, we took our stocks that we had in northwest Syria and we started distributing. Day one, 6,500 people. Day two, uh, 60,000 people. Then 150,000 people. Now we have reached 800,000 people, both in Turkey and in, uh, in northwest uh, Syria. But, you know, we are providing mainly, you imagine, your kitchen is gone, uh, your house is gone. So we are providing food for hot meals to municipality kitchens uh, in both countries. We are providing sandwiches. We are providing food parcels because supply chains have been disrupted and people can't go to the shops and buy. So that's what we are doing here in Turkey. We are working with 55 municipalities um, who do this soup kitchens in the camp. I was in a camp today meeting with people who, you know, have now to think about their immediate next steps. They're mourning, you know, their, their, their loved ones who left. Um, they don't have a house. They're in the camp that has been set up very effectively by the disaster management here. But now they need food. They need medicine. Uh, they need um, uh, water. And so um, at least with the food they're getting three times a day, they don't need to worry where their next meal is coming from. Stunning that you've already helped 800,000 people, but there's so many more, as, as you're right. saying, that need all the necessities. Earlier this month, you, you were urging for the um, border crossing from Turkey into Syria to be opened so your organization could get more aid supplies in. Has that happened yet? And if not, where does um, opening it stand? Yes, we have now three border crossings that are open. In the initial days, we drew from our stocks, that the strategic stocks that we had put into northwest Syria um, to exactly for this type of, uh, of situations. We are in emergency. The northwest Syria, people are displaced all the time. So we took our stocks there, but we very quickly said we need to replenish. Now we're replenishing. We sent 55 trucks already with food supplies into northwest Syria. Syria, but we need more uh, uh, openings. You know, the, the, the roads are damaged. It slows down. There is congestion on the road. It slows down the movement of food into northwest Syria. So we're very much also um, urging for um, other openings 
from within Syria, what we call cross-line openings from Aleppo to also open to uh, for food to be able to move inside uh, northwest Syria, both from Turkey, but also from within Syria. We need to take the food where it is, and we have it in Syria and in Turkey, and it needs to move in. Well, it is just staggering to think of the tremendous need. Corinne Fleischer, Corinne, thank you for sharing your insight into the scope and scale of this disaster with us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Corinne. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye.